So final two questions for you. Best advice for a junior player, maybe they're 12, 13, 14, you're down the road, you've done it all. Best advice you could give a junior player? Yeah, I mean, I think looking back, if there were any kind of mistakes that I made growing up, um, I think you just need to get out there and expose yourself and play a lot of matches. I, I had a fear of failure very much growing up, and I didn't like to lose. And so I often hid my game a didn't little bit. Didn't sound like you lost much anyway. Well, but I, I didn't play that much. <laughs> I had a fear of failure, lost all the time. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I tried to hide a little bit, and I think I, that hurt my development a little bit, you know, as I was continuing to grow up. And uh, there's no place for fear, and I, and I learned that later on. I wish I had learned that lesson a little bit earlier. Um, I think for junior players, there is a fine balance between trusting your coach knowing, uh, putting yourself on the line and trying to grow your game, which I think is important. But I would say the most important thing is learning how to be competitive and learning how to win. And whatever that means and whatever that looks like. And I think there are ways that you can add on to your game, but push comes to shove. It's deuce, five all in the third set. You've got to know how to win and how to compete. And that's what separates a guy like Roddick, you know, Federer, and Nadal. There are no shots that those guys are hitting that we can't hit. They just know how to hit them at the right time, make better decisions, not get all crazy when the pressure hits the best of them. And I think the more you can put yourself in that position as a kid, the better you will do later on. And I think you have to look to continue to improve. You have to trust your coach. But don't try to improve. Oftentimes you see players trying to add a new shot. I'm going to learn how to serve in volley this week. And they lose, and they come off the court, and they say, well, I mean, I was trying something new. What do you expect? No. Yeah, right. Your job out there, first and foremost, is to win. win now, match, I'd love yeah. to see you add certain volley to it, but yeah. the best players are the most stubborn. I will not lose. I don't care what it takes. Now, certainly that does not mean cheating, uh, but it, that competitive edge is what separates the great from, from the good. And uh, I would always say that if you can put yourself in positions to compete to hone that skill, that will take you a lot further in life than learning how to add a new, you know, adding a, a new... Um, a shot to your game but looking back I, I i i wish i would have done that a little earlier i was i was chicken yeah and, me too uh, yeah i know the feeling you know, yeah, i was thinking I, about that when you were saying it i yeah, was chicken I just, too i just <laughs> i it was so sad when i lost i didn't want to experience it's it. easier to pass it off and say well i was trying this i was trying that you, right? you know you always want excuses yeah, and sure, i would say yeah. even a, to a uh, advice for coaches as much as it is parents as much as it is players don't make excuses there right. is no excuse. Right. I don't care if you're injured. I don't care. You know, you always hear guys make up a reason, and hence they give themselves a mental out right. why they can lose. And the second that even comes into your mind, you've already lost. So, sure, there are reasons you lose. I mean, there's reasons that guys are losing on tour right now, but you don't go into a match thinking about it, and you certainly don't walk off the court and, and talk about it right away because at that point it's ar it was already too late. And I think too many guys would walk off the court and say, guys cheated me. You didn't lose because of four cheating points. Right. I was my arm hurts. You didn't lose. You know, the, your arm is just right here. There's plenty of yeah. ways that I could still win injured. Right. Um, I didn't sleep well. I didn't. I mean, you I gotta, used all these. Yeah. You, you gotta. You gotta. Learn, <laughs> I had a whole list. You know, it was, and I would certainly <laughs> listen for them and, yeah. and, and hope that players were feeling that way. Sure. Um, but I think the sooner that parents can understand that and help their kid see that. I think the sooner that coaches don't allow that, I think sometimes coaches' egos get wrapped up in the, in the student's result. Sure. Um, you know, you, we've got to build our players a little bit tougher. And I think oftentimes now there's too many built-in excuses. And I think, um, you know, my parents certainly did not let me get away with any of that. And I am very appreciative for that. And certainly I take that into my life now. Um, you know, there's accountability and responsibility that I think is very important to learn early on. Great advice. Okay, so the big question, the last question, is advice for parents. Yeah. Again, you've been through the whole gamut here, so very super successful junior college player, pro player. New parents, they don't know this is a different world, as you know. It's kind of crazy sometimes sure. out there. Best uh, advice for parents. Parents are in a very difficult position because you love your kids and you want to see them do well. And I think that can bring out a crazy side in parents. I don't have kids, so I don't get it or claim to get it. But... They're, they'll do anything for their kids. And I think sometimes you have to take yourself out of the emotional desire to want to see them win and try to help instill characteristics that not only will make them a good person, but actually do make them a good player. Um, when I threw my racket on the court, my parents pulled me aside, took my rackets, and I was done playing for two weeks. So that simply was not an option. Now, why do I thank them for that? Well, 
you know, it makes me seem polite. Uh, <laughs> but more importantly, when I would lose control on the court and I'm furious that I'm losing to this terrible player, getting furious was not an option. Because that option, if I exercise that option, then tennis was not going to be an option to play. So I learned how to control my emotions. Because I knew if I lost control, tennis, I was done. Right. So I thank them on multiple levels for that. I think uh, keeping up their sportsmanship. I think being encouraging. And I think you want to encourage them to continue to hone their craft and hone tennis. But the balance between parent and coach is very delicate. Because as a parent, you see what they're doing wrong and you want to help. I think the best thing you can do is take that to the coach. Um, certainly don't drive your coach crazy, but uh, always be a parent. And I think that was something my parents did very well. They loved me regardless of my uh, success and let my coach do the work. Now, certainly were they encouraging when I wanted to lay on the couch and watch TV? Um, yeah, I mean, they said, get your butt up and, and get to work. Um, and I'm thankful for that. That was certainly difficult and hard for a parent to know that fine line. But I think let the coach do his job. Focus on instilling good sportsmanship, good work ethic, um, and respect for the game as much as you know themselves. I guess. I mean, it's it is. I, as much as I love tennis, I think being a tennis parent is harder than playing. And I give my parents a lot of credit for what they had to put up with. Not only the lack of control and the nerves and the anxiety, but recognizing it, it was more important for me to grow up into a solid person than it was for me to win. Fortunately, it, it, it worked in both areas for me as far as it, it gave me good manners, but also um, helped me to be a better tennis player. So um, it's a fine line, and I hope that if my kids decide to play tennis, <laughs> you know, that I have a great coach. I think at the end of the day, have a great coach and let your kids know that win or lose, it's about fighting as hard as you can and making no excuses and being and, – and, taking personal pride and responsibility in yourself. That's great. Great stuff. Brian, so, thanks so much for being on you. the show. It was great yeah. stuff. <laughs> it was well, you heard it, guys. Brian Vahaley, he's done it all. He's spanned the whole gamut of success in, in tennis. This is another one. Take notes on this one. Watch it again and again. Write down some key notes because here's a gentleman who's seen it all, and uh, we can learn a lot from him. So for Brian Vahaley, Steve Siebold, The Junior Tennis Show, thanks for watching, guys.